Thank you for joining me on the second episode of Retro Collecting with Retro Ed and Friends. On the first episode, we explored a few of the areas where you can bag yourself some nice retro, but you know what? There's a heck of a lot more places out there. So we're gonna look at some of those on this video. I'm gonna be joined as before by some fantastic YouTubers who are gonna share their wisdom, their advice, their recommendations. So make sure you stick around. So let's kick things off by talking about online marketplaces. Places like Facebook Marketplace or Macari can be really good resources to use. The seller doesn't have the overhead of eBay fees or shop rent, so realistically prices should be a bit better. That said, you're still going to find the odd evil cowboy who thinks just because it's retro, it must be more valuable than George Lucas's beard. It can be a bit time sensitive, so keep an eye on what has recently been posted, as well as items that have been discounted. Most online marketplaces will allow you to set up alerts just to keep on top of things. Don't be afraid to haggle, but equally don't be a complete knob and lay down an offer so cheeky the seller's going to run a mile. Be careful about payment and really only pay once you've collected the item and had an opportunity to thoroughly check it. And now I'm delighted to bring in Dad Racer to talk about his views on Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace, however, I've had a little bit of success with. And to me, places like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, they're like online garage sales. And the reason I say that is because if you do find something, you can always, always, always negotiate. More often than not, I find nothing, but it's the one time that I do find something out of 20 that keeps me coming back. And that is what makes Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and that other one next door so special and exciting. So. I personally prefer Facebook Marketplace just because of the unknown. You never know what you're going to find. I like that a lot. Now, I've got to be honest, I love my sleep. So the thought of getting up at silly o'clock to visit a car boot sale just isn't my thing. But that said, I fully respect the fact that, you know, there's lots of delicious retro to be found at those places. And fortunately, I know a few tubers who are willing to set their alarm clock just a little bit earlier to go out and nab some bargains. So let's have a listen to what they've got to say. For me, I always find the best place is the boot sale because you just never know what you're going to see. Like I said, you turn up, like I said, you're on a wing and a prayer, you know. Do you know what I mean? You go sometimes and it's crap, do you know what I mean? Nothing at all there. And then other times you go and it's quality. Do you know what I mean? You find what I have the one day. Best find ever, I think I had was a complete boxed leaf green. Uh, Pokemon Leaf Green. I think I paid 50 pence. It's on an old video, like I said, it's years ago. Wish I still had that now, mind. <laughs> I got shocked of it. <laughs> yeah, all the box was lovely. It had, um, oh, what do you call it? The extra thing that comes with it. I'm not doing that on Game Boy, but that. And what I love about the books is just the interaction with people, I mean, the laughs and the banter, the bartering and all that you can have. It's absolute quality. Not so good when you get over there at uh, half six, seven o'clock in the morning and <laughs> we'll have a stroll round, there's nothing here. But then the burger van's always open, so even when you're losing, you're still winning. Who don't like a burger for breakfast? And when it comes to best places to find and buy retro games, well, it depends on your location. For example, I live in a small town here in Bosnia and it's almost impossible to find retro games, you know, because there's like zero stores that are selling them you know you can buy stuff online you know ebay and pages like that but to go in a store and buy it that's impossible here you know in general i think that uh, swap meet or the flea market is is the best option you know because when you go to the flea market you can you know buy the games at like let's say affordable prices you know like the the ebay where you paying like the the sky high price but like i said uh I live in a small small town here and even when I go to the, the the flea market you know sometimes I find one games but usually you know I, I can go like six times in a row and find zero games so it, it depends on your location but basically I would say in general uh, the best lo location you know be best place to, to buy uh, retro games and any retro stuff is the flea market 
so I haven't been to very many toy fairs or gaming fairs. It's certainly something I'd love to do in the future. So as a result, I'm not a competent authority to give any advice on them. But fortunately, yet again, I know someone who is, someone whose enthusiasm levels on the scale of one to 10 would be a Spinal Tap 11. It's Ali from 16 Bits and Bobs. Yes, people, Ali Ali here at 16 Bits and Bobs. Hope everyone's wicked. So buying retro, where do I buy? Do you know what? The main thing for me, yeah, is having fun. You gotta have fun with it. If you're not enjoying buying the games, you know, what's the point? You gotta have fun buying them. And the way to do that for me personally is to get out there, support the local businesses, go to events. An example I'm gonna give is London Gamers Market. Obviously, depending on where you are, what you're up to, there might be other gaming markets where they, where you are. There's loads of them, ain't there? And you know, it's a great way to chat to people. It's all about the interaction. You know, when you're buying the game, you get to talk to the seller. And this is a local business. You know, they've got a stall and they've put all their games out. So you get to chat to them. You get to open the games, you know, have it physically in your hand. Open up the case, look at the instruction manual, see what other little bits and bobs are in there. Check the CD, the cart to see if it's all good. You know, my collection's kind of small, so I'm prepared to pay a little bit extra sometimes. And you know, I am prepared to pay a little bit extra to make it a nice example. And if that means supporting a local business, then why not? I'll give books as an example, yeah? I'll give books as an example. I've got some books beside me. I like reading and I like to go to Waterstones or a bookshop and I'm prepared to pay that little bit extra rather than, I know I can get off Amazon sometimes a lot cheaper, but it's not about always getting it cheaper. You know, it's sometimes nice just for that interaction. And when you go to these events, you get to chat to people, you get to meet people and that's the whole experience. And when you come away from a gaming event like that, You've got your game, but you also had a good time. You know, you've gone with friends. You've met up with friends. You've got to bump into other people, other tubers, other instas, and you've chatted to them. And it's a whole experience. So you've got to have fun with it. Before you go out, you know, you can check online. You can have an idea in your mind of what you're prepared to pay for a game or what an average selling price is. You know, you can check online websites and compare them against each other. Have maybe a list on your, you know, create a list and and have a checklist of games. That's what I did on my last one. I don't always do that. Sometimes it's nice to be spontaneous and find those little gems which you didn't think about. But if you've got a list of games that you want in your collection, it's nice to have that with a rough idea of what you're prepared to pay and then compare it. And you know, when you're going to these places, it's all about the interactions. It's so, you know, I would say, me personally, if I'm buying retro, Get out there, have fun. You know, retro is a great market. You know, there's some awesome people to me. And retro is a beautiful thing. So if I was to say anything, have fun with it. You know, it's boring. If going on eBay, you can get whatever you want, right? But once you've got the game, you know, through the postman. I mean, I do love my postman. But, you know, there's only a certain amount you can do when buying online. When I came away from the last event, I came away with games. But the most important things, I had a lot of fun as well. I had a lot of fun chatting to people. That's what I would say, people. Have fun. And everyone, stay happy. Happy vibes. Good vibes. One love. Mr. Ed, love you lots. Catch you later, people. Yeah. It's perhaps a very obvious one, but trading with fellow collectors. In my opinion, it's very, very underused. And why would you not want to trade with someone who's you know, arguably a fellow enthusiast, that's knowledgeable, um, that is likely to you know, offer you something, trade, exchange, sell you something at a good price for good value, and someone that's you know more often than not is going to be very transparent about the condition um, of the item that you're getting from them. And with fellow collectors, you're better set up to organise an exchange or a swap. And on that note, I'd love to introduce a culinary YouTuber who's going to talk about why it's great to do some trades. Hello YouTube Retro Chef here, back, finally, but not on my channel, <laughs> we're on Retro Edge channel, a fellow person from the good country, county of Essex, God's country, should we say. So, Ed asked me to give some of my knowledge around collecting 
and trading and where to get games. Obviously, if most of you do or don't know, I host Swap Shop live from Essex, God's country. <laughs> How many times can I say that? Anyway, um, so the idea of the Swap Shop for me was something, my wife gave me the idea really, during the lockdown of 2020, um, I was still going around on Facebook Marketplace collecting bundles of games and whatnot. And I thought to myself, you know, where else can you kind of get rid of these games to other people sort of thing. And I was on a few live streams at the time, which was awesome. Got to meet some great people, some real good dear friends now, thanks to, uh, you know, the lockdown. And my wife said to me, why don't you just, you know, sell your games on a live stream? You know, swap them. And I was like, swap shop? She doesn't know what Swap Shop is. Um, I don't really know what Swap Shop is, to be honest with you. I'm a, I'm a little bit too young for it. But at the same time, it was just another... It was something that I've, I've seen before. And I thought, with a little bit of help from Retro Bear, Sega Zombie, Craig Goodwin's Place. These are the guys that right at the beginning, when I first started, were, were like saying, Yep, let's, you can do this and do that and do that. You know, they, you know part of the... Of the retro gaming community who stuck behind me, um, got one on behind from the, from the other weekend, but yeah, um, and I just spoke to them quite a bit about it. And then the idea, the the premises behind it, what is, is uh, you get to trade with the tubers live via the comments or via a Facebook swap shop page, and it's just gone from strength to strength. It started off with maybe, you know. 15 people watching 20 people watching so now I'm getting over 60 70 people watching at a time and it's just grown and grown lots of people doing deals doing trades buying stuff meeting up buying stuff doing their own little vids saying what they have bought or what they've traded it's really brought the community together and I think at the same time you can cut a tuber a deal rather than going through eBay or going through uh, a Facebook marketplace, or going through CEX, you're cutting the tuber a deal by going through the swap shop. And that's the reason why, you know, once a month now, I try and get five new tubers all the time, try and get new people on so we can get fresh faces, get their face out there, so you guys can watch their great content, and at the same time you can see what they've got to let go, all of their tat. Um, but yeah, that's it, that's, you know, that's the, one of the things I think's has come good out of the lockdown. Um, it's another avenue for tubers to trade with each other and have a bit of a laugh live on the camera. Ed, I hope that's all right for you. Uh, it's um, it's now come up, you know, an important part of my channel, the Swap Shop, and I look forward to it getting from strength to strength, bigger and bigger. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye. So we've spoken a bit about Facebook Marketplace. What we haven't spoken about is Facebook Groups. So it's another area where you can find some like-minded individuals, some knowledgeable individuals, and do some good trades. So on that note, I'd love to introduce Luke from Reynolds Reviews, who's going to give his advice on Facebook groups. Getting the best deals um, and bargains when looking at buying vintage toys and figures. Yeah, I mean, Facebook groups, again, are probably the best place. Um, you know, get involved with some groups that are collecting the lines that you're collecting. Get chatting to some members. Um, get established in that group and you'll find that you'll get the best deals there. You know, like I said before, if it's a popular group, the hardest part might be um, getting to that item and claiming that item before it's already been claimed by somebody else. But generally, um, get involved, get familiar with some Facebook groups and there, I dare say, you'll get the best bargains. However, there is still a place for eBay um, when it comes to this. Now, I'm 
uh, on a very, very strict budget every month. I don't have a huge amount of money to spend on toys, but when it comes to eBay, um, if I find a listing with something that I want to buy and it's already a good price, if there's a make and offer option, I'll still always make an offer because if you can potentially get it at an even cheaper price, it's always worth trying to do that. Now, the risk you run is somebody jumping in and buying it before uh, you've finished negotiating, which is a risk you've got to calculate. Uh, but personally, if there's an offer option there, why not take it? I always do. Uh, but one thing that I am quite naughty with, which I do tend to do as well, is even if I find something at a good price where there isn't an offer option, occasionally I will email the seller and just ask them if they're willing to listen to an offer. Um, sometimes you get a lot of rude responses back. You do have to have thick skin. You've got to be prepared for that. Um, but for every rude response you get, you will get the odd person that is willing to listen to an offer uh, and potentially you will get it at a cheaper price. I do it. And like I say, you've got to be prepared for a rude response. You do get them. But for everyone, you do get the odd one that's willing to do you a cut price as well. So I would always be cheeky on eBay. You do occasionally get a result. Um, best words for payment? Well, again, you know, on eBay, you've got things like PayPal. But especially on Facebook, uh, we would always recommend, especially in the groups, one group that I'm involved in, we always recommend PayPal Goods and Service. Uh, because you're covered then if anything happens to the deal you then can get your money back um, so we always recommend goods and services however if you know the seller you've dealt with them before you trust them etc you can pay via friends and family which means that the seller avoids fees uh, which means everyone could potentially get a better deal um, but as far as if you don't know the seller i would always recommend goods and services because then if the deal goes south you can always get your money back it's a really unfortunate thing but with the seemingly continuous increase in the price of retro a lot of toys, games, etc., are becoming more and more unaffordable, particularly where they're rare. And it can be a love or hate thing, but as a result of that, quite a few custom sellers and reproduction item sellers are appearing on the scene. Obviously, make your own mind up on things and consider the legalities of some of the scenarios. But if you have got an item that's you know 20 plus years old, is rare or unobtainable, might cost hundreds if not thousands, then the custom route, the reproduction route, in my opinion, is one worth exploring. So let's get a bit more into detail on this topic and let's hear from James from Game Zone Birdroom. Welcome back to Retro Ed. Is that right? Yes, yes it is, because Retro Ed has come up with a fantastic idea for a mini series. And he said, James, do you want to be part of it? And, you know, it's Retro Ed, of course. YouTube of the month for April 2022. So, yes, I was going to definitely be part of this mini series. So, basically, the idea is where do you get your games from? You know, do you get them from CEX, eBay, like someone like Phoebe Chicky who gets them off his drug dealer, which is. Jason, very scary looking man. You know, I don't know what that's all about, but there we go. Uh, but what about those very expensive games? Do you pay pay out your hard earned cash? Or is there another way? First up is Grace Reaction Games. Love this site. They do disc space reproductions and this is the list. So quite a lot to choose from. Remember, some consoles do need to be modded though. A sneak peek at their satin collection. Then we have AliExpress. Love this site. Especially this shop, Retro Classic Game Store. Here's a small selection of the games they have. Then we move over to Sean Game Store. Mainly does Mega Drive and some of the games even have manuals. So that's pretty cool. Then back over to my ugly boat race. So who's decided to join me? How oh, the heck's? Uh, so what are the games from AliExpress like? Well, this is from Sean Game Store. They are the cheap Mega Drive boxes, but the actual paper they use for the artwork is really good quality. That's the disc. You can tell it's a repo due to the fact it's got the missing bit in the cartridge should have gone for the ones with the uh the manual they are a couple quid more but there we go play just like the original you really couldn't tell the difference if it's in the actual machine uh, next up we have uh the retro classic store for aliexpress these mainly do these snes games 
and I must say the quality of the SNES games are, are fantastic. You get these plastic uh, protective cases as well, which is a nice added bonus. Uh, let's just show you the... Uh, really hard to tell if these are fake or not. The only way to tell, you get these little bag, bags that they give you as well, which is quite nice to keep the disc clean. Yeah, the only way you'll probably tell if these are fake is due to the fact that some of the wording on the back is wrong. But yeah, if you see these games cheap on uh, eBay, be careful because they are probably reproductions. But I can't fault these stores on uh, AliExpress. They are really good. Right, next up is Resurrections games. Dreamcast games come in DVD type cases. I've got this nice blue, which is very similar to the actual Dreamcast colours they use for the, the swell. Disc is quite nice. It's actually got artwork on the disc. So yeah, that's Carrier Dreamcast. Uh, let's move on to some Sega Saturns. They do a nice big box set of the Panzer Dragon Saga in a nice, nice case. Look at the artwork on that, really good. And yeah, you get all, all the discs in there as well. For the Saturn, they also do the Japanese style cases as well. So if you want the Japanese style art, the choice is yours. They are slightly more expensive. I think they're a pound more. And you also can get, for some of them, oh, disc is falling out, the actual spine card, which is brilliant. So yeah, a lot of effort goes into the into the uh, reproductions and they are absolute quality. So yeah, if you're getting into retro gaming, you don't really want to get the expensive games and you're thinking, is there another option? There is AliExpress or ResurrectionGames.com. Anyway, guys, I'll pass you back to the man, Retro Ed. Well, here we are at the end of the second episode of the mini series. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I hope you learned something. If for whatever reason you missed the first episode, then I'd encourage you to go back and check that out. I'd equally encourage you to check out the channels of the people that very kindly contributed their time, their wisdom, um, their advice um, to this video. And on the next episode, we're going to be talking about how to nail yourself a great deal. I'm going to be joined by even more retro friends. I really cannot wait. In the meantime, check out the comments. If you've got any recommendations as to where you source your retro, then please let me know. Until next time, cheers.